Okay, so now that we kind of have this set up and we've seen how some of these basic materials will work, let's go ahead and take a look at the next side of it. So I'm going to choose Modes and I'm going to swap over to Slate. Now, with Slate, you'll notice that pretty much everything is now gone. We also have a much different looking browser than we did before. Well, everything we have is still here. It's just hidden away from us a little bit. So, over on the left, we have all these new options. But if we scroll all the way to the bottom, we can see all the materials that are currently in the scene. So we could drag these out and drop them in here and see what we can do with them. But we're not going to worry about that for now. What I'm going to do is scroll back up to the top and let's take a look at some of these other options. Well first off I'm going to choose let's just go down a little bit I'm going to choose these from Scanline because right now if you remember from before our Scanline is what we have in our rendering right here. If we do some of the others they may not work. So under Scanline I'm going to just click and drag out Standard and drop it here. Okay. Well if I double click on it I'll get that same menu that I saw before minus a few of those options that have kind of moved up here. Well just like before I can choose it, the object, right click on the material and I can choose assign or I can come up to assign material to selection. Well what we saw before also gave us the ability to drag and drop but we can't do that as easy or at least it doesn't seem like it because if we grab it this material we're just moving it around but instead we have all these little dots that you see get highlighted just a bit as we move through them. This one over here is essentially an output. I'm going to take this output by clicking and dragging, go all the way over here to the object, and I can now link it in that method also. So now anything I do, like changing the color of the object, can be done in the same way as we had in Compact. But Slate gives us access to a brand new menu and ways we can work with stuff. Similar to what I did with the plane down here, I'm going to open up Maps right here. And when I do, you'll see I get all those same options. Well, in here I'm going to choose Bump, and I'm going to choose Displacement. If I hit Render, nothing special is happening to this box. I'm going to zoom into it though, just so it's a little bit easier to see. So with this, I'm going to come back down here, and under Bump, I'm going to choose No Map like I did before, and this time I'm going to go with Dent. I'll say OK. Well, you'll note when you do, something a little strange happens over here. I get this entirely new floating thing. Well, that's because Slate gives a nice breakdown of everything in the scene currently. Well, if you remember before, we drew we copied this by drag and dropping it but I'm going to do something else instead. We have all these inputs and outputs and there's that displacement. So I'm going to take this and drag a second line and connect it to displacement. So now anything I do to change this one by double clicking on it, I can now have affect both of these options and we can create these links in a nice little web of controls to each of these different options. Well like we had before we need to show shaded in the viewport so I can actually see what's going on. Well since I have this selected when I went to it it's going to show me only how this is affecting the object. I want to do this with the base root material first. And it doesn't really seem like too much is happening. So I'm going to go ahead and render. Well, I can see that plenty is indeed happening. Now, this can just be a simple issue with how the viewport's showing things. 
compared to what's being seen in the materials. So I'm going to close these for the moment. And we need to take a look at one other way we can see things differently. Well, we had perspective up here to change our view. We also have standard to show us different qualities of things. And we have default shading. With default shading, we can change how we want some of these things to look. And the changes I'm going to make is I'm going to show edged faces. And I'm going to go ahead and choose to see some of these other views. So I choose graphite and it's going to look a little bit more like this. Stylized color ink. It's a bit more as a way to put it, cell shaded E, for those of you that are familiar with that. But I'm just going to go with the default shading for the moment. Now if I choose something like high quality, it's going to try to re-render, and now I can see everything that I wanted to. Some of this is going to be based on the display, some of it will be based on how you want things to show up in general. Regardless, I'm going to go back into my material editor, and now that I can see things, I'm going to go ahead and double click back onto maps, and I can start changing and updating all of these different options. And I'm going to try changing my tiling on everything to a 4 for X, Y, and Z. Alright, not too bad. I'm going to go back into this, and I'll do that by double clicking. And I'm going to go down to my maps. Well, with all the bumps and everything, I can choose just how drastic I want these changes to be. And you'll note, you can go far over 0 to 100. And as you do, and I'm going to rotate this a bit and zoom in, when we render, it can change things a little bit too drastically. So I'm going to move this, and ignoring my actual viewport itself, I'm just going to worry about my render here and my options over here. So 500 might be a little much. Let's try 200. And I'll do that for both displacement and bump. Okay, we still have a lot of that, so let's drop it a little bit further. Okay. Well, it helped a little bit not be quite so heavy on everything. So let's try something like 50 on both. Okay, so now we have a little bit more in between. So we have little bumps here and we got heavy ones mixed together. But as I go through, I can jump back and forth between these options and change any number of these different numbers. And in doing so, I will get drastically different effects. I will put things together in a slightly different way. I can change the strengths, the sizes of each of the dents themselves, which each one will give so many different possible combinations that we can create any number of just different effects. So if I bring this down to just very small bits with small strengths, I can end up with something even like a sand block looking effect. Or if I change low strength, high size, I could even end up with just little dents, which could be anything from just impacts of something, or even let's say we have a giant robot has been hit by missiles, bullets. Well, now I can get some of these faults in the armor. And with these different kind of combinations, we can create a good number of different results with a very simple operation. Now, that said, I'm going to come back into this, and I'm going to come down to where we have diffuse color, because right now it's set to just blue. But with something like this, I can choose no map, and I'm going to go ahead and choose, let's go with, we'll just go with a simple wood. It'll take just a second. So here's my now wooden, let me zoom out in the main viewport. Here's my real simple wooden box. 
but the wood coloring has its own grain to it. So I'm going to come over here, choose map 2 for the dent, and on the keyboard just press delete. Which will drastically change how it looks, because we get rid of all of those. But, similar, I can now link this same diffuse color to the bump map. And now, in all of these spots, I'll zoom back into it. We can see all the grain patterns. And by changing what we have in here, I can emphasize those grain patterns. So I'll link this same thing to each of those different options. And as I keep doing this and changing some of these options, I can create a very drastic, more realistic looking option, which this might be a little much. So let's go ahead and come back and reduce some of this. I'll bring my bump back down and I'll bring my displacement down. And now when I start looking at all of this with all these grains and everything, I can actually start seeing some physically changing effects by combining all of these same simple things together. And this is something that we will want to get used to and use quite a bit in essentially every single thing that we work with for this class. So this is a quick look at the differences between slate and compact and how we can start combining all these different little things together in order to create something that looks, realistically speaking, not too bad. But I'll go ahead and get rid of these real quick. I'm going to make a simple cone, just because that's a little bit more wood-like. Let me rephrase that, a little more tree-like. And let's take a look at what this looks like. Well, the quality is a little low, but we definitely can see how all of it's starting to work together. So now, we just kind of would have to go through and start working out what needs to be where, how it has to work, and some other options that we won't get into at the moment, but things that will become much more apparent and used in just about everything soon. So... Thank you for this one, and I'll see you in the next one.